Hello, all my favorite internet people. It is Brandon Hart, the Eco Struder, and I am here today because I have, I have been too rigid. I have been too firm and structured and I, I don't know. <laughs> Basically, I want to talk about flexible filament. I, I, I don't know about you guys, but I print in flexible materials quite a lot, um, but I tend to stick to the same flexible materials. I know there's more out there. I know there are more options. And when I look around the internet to try to find any descriptions or comparisons or you know head-to-heads of different types of flexible filaments, it's usually maybe two, or at most I think I saw somebody did five. So I, made it my own personal mission to go out and round up as many different flexible filaments as I could find in the world to create one big roundup of flexible materials. And the result of that is what you see here. Um, one of the things I wanted to make sure I did was not just contain, uh, just uh, include different types of TPU, different brands of TPU. Um, if you <clears throat> go on Amazon or eBay or anywhere and, and just type in TPU, you will find numerous brands of just straight up plain old generic TPU. Um, I did include some TPU, some just straight generic TPU uh, in the roundup because that's what a lot of people are going to be using. And I want to see how that compares to a lot of the other stuff that's a little bit more specialized. But really the main point of this was um, what different types of flexible filaments. So not, again, not just what different brands of TPU can I find, but what different types of flexible filaments with different characteristics and what, you know, things that make them special could I find. So how were they tested? Well, um, I made sure of a few different things. Number one, all the materials were printed on the same exact machine with the same exact uh, extruder settings and everything like that. So uh, they were all printed on a Lulzbot TAS 6 that has been highly modified. Um, so it uses 1.75 millimeter diameter filaments, which all of these are. Um, it, uh, let's see, I used PVA, so glue stick on the print bed. Um, whenever possible. In some cases, the materials just simply wouldn't stick to that, so I had to change it. But generally speaking, PVA on the on the bed. The the model itself was sliced with two perimeters, so both on the the inside and on the outside, two perimeters, uh, and then four top and four bottom, so zero percent infill. So all of these are totally hollow, um, except for the two outer perimeters, four top, four bottom. All the materials were dried in my filament dryer um, for usually right around 24 hours, in some cases even more, so that I could make sure that there was no moisture included in the materials themselves prior to printing that would affect the print quality or, or anything like that. Um, I generally tried to follow the manufacturer's recommended print settings and stuck to that. Um, in some cases, things would not print with those manufacturer's recommended settings. Fun fact, it seems like every single manufacturer wants to recommend that their material can be printed faster and uh, colder than it can. <laughs> so uh, almost all of these are at the upper end, if not higher than the recommended uh, print temperature and lower than uh, the recommended print speed. So they all had to be printed very slow and very hot. Um, but, uh, but I tried to stick as much to the manufacturer's recommended settings as possible. Um, and one thing you might notice too, when you look at a lot of these, um, sometimes it caused issues, but I tried to keep ret retraction enabled whenever possible. Um, again, it wasn't always possible. You're not going to put retraction on X60, <laughs> but, um, generally speaking, I tried to keep all of the settings pretty much the same. So yeah, that's how I tested all the materials. 
This is probably a good point to uh, throw out the fact that some of these materials were provided by either distributors or the manufacturers themselves at absolutely no cost to me. That did not affect my, um, my opinion of them. Um, in some cases, the materials I was provided for free were some of the worst materials that I have. So uh, hopefully you can tell I'm, I'm not biased here by the fact that these materials were provided for free, but I do need to let you know that that is in fact the case. On my website, HeartSmart Products, I do sell 3D printing filament. Um, and I, I don't really sell any flexible filament currently. Uh, the only, I don't know, catch to that, I guess, is that after I conducted the Roundup, um, Tall Man 3D, um, who makes some of the, what I'm gonna call bendable filaments, not necessarily fully flexible stuff, like PCTPE and T-Line, which were included in the Roundup, um, I, I ended up signing an agreement with them and I am now reselling Tall Man 3D high strength materials on my website. Okay, <laughs> enough of that. Let's get into the actual uh, fun part about this. So first of all, one of the things that became immediately clear as I was working with a lot of these different materials is you have stuff like Filiflex, for example, that is super squishy and, you know, and, and really isn't in the same category at all as something like a Python Flex, which, you know, yeah, it's, flexible, but man, not very. Um, and so these, these really seem to be very different categories. And then in the middle, you would have kind of your standard TPUs and, you know, some like the, the pro flex, uh, from matter hackers or, you know, the Ninja tech cheetah, as I mentioned earlier, things like that, where they're not really, you know, hard, um, but they're also not super squishy either. So I ended up artificially creating three different categories of materials. And um, hopefully, I mean, feel free to, to weigh in whether these are the appropriate categories of materials or not. Um, you could probably take issue with the names that I gave them, but the uh, softest category uh, of materials, so that's this kind of the, the portion closest to me, all of these guys here, um, these I called squishy. <laughs> so this is the extra soft, extra squishy, super flexible um, materials. Uh, these often are very elastic as well. Um, so these are the squishies right here. Um, and then this middle section of materials, uh, what some companies would call semi-flex, um, others just call them flexible, uh, any number of different things. But these I, I all call uh, the flexible materials. These are kind of your standard flexible materials. They're not super squishy, um, but they definitely, you know, can, can be squished, can be bent, can be deformed. They just don't, they're not as elastic um, and, and they don't really, the name squishy doesn't apply to these guys. However, all of these, again, can be squished, can be bent, um, and will generally pop back. They're just a little bit more rigid, a little bit more structured than um, some of the squishy stuff. The last category, however, this very front row here, all of these are really not squishy at all. Uh, you know, if you try to, if you try to squish these, um, they're just going to crack and break eventually. Uh, some of them are extremely strong, so good luck actually getting them to to break. But um, generally, you know, again, uh, these these are just they're 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 hard. Um, You can tell what I mean by that, but these are hard yet, you know, they're meant to be flexible. So this is crystal flex, for example, um, from uh, form Futura, I believe. So this is a, um, a flexible material by name, um, and some of its characteristics and, uh, yeah, that's form Futura. I just had to make sure. Sorry. I have my computer down here because there's a lot of information to keep track of. Um, but, uh, so, you know, it is, it is flexible. It will bend, it will conform uh, as necessary as you ask it to, but it's not really going to serve as a good, for example, a tire <laughs> would be a terrible tire because it's just a hard material. Um, so three different categories, squishy, flexible, bendable is what I call this, this most 
rigid of categories. Um, so that's the way I'm handling it. Hopefully you like it, but uh, if not, certainly let me know down in the comments. Okay, so with that said, not all flexible materials are created equally. Otherwise, what would be the point in a roundup? Or what would be the point in having 42 different materials that you could uh, choose from? So there are some that I do wanna point out before I get to, I know everybody always wants to get to, well, what's the best? You know, which, which, which materials should I use? What's the, what's the winner? Um, there are so many different things that go into why you might want one particular material versus another one. So just wanna touch on a few things here uh, about some of these that are kind of cool, kind of interesting. Um, being the eco extruder, one of the things that I looked for in all of these different materials, which unfortunately in flexibles is very hard to find, is eco-friendliness. Um, there are some materials that are eco-friendly. Probably the, the award for most eco-friendly material probably has to go to Yoga Flex. Um, this is from 3D Print Life. First of all, it's just a really great material. I, I really do like this stuff. Um, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a flexible. So in my three categories, this is a flexible material. Um, so it can be squished, but you know, it's, it's not squishy. Um, but the big thing about Yoga Flex is that this stuff is um, not only uh, highly, highly eco-friendly, um, it is eco-friendly, sorry, consulting my notes. Um, so this stuff is 100% biodegradable um, and each spool that is planted, or sorry, <laughs> wow, that would be cool. Uh, each spool that is sold, uh, for each spool that is sold, the company 3D Print Life actually contracts with a third party organization to plant a tree. So that's pretty cool. I mean, it's hard to get much more eco-friendly than that. Some other eco-friendly mentions here. This is a material from Tree D out of Italy, I think. So what makes this particular, this material eco-friendly is the fact that it actually has ground up bits of tires. Yes, recycled tires uh, are ground up. So actual rubber, unlike anything else, this has actual rubber, legit rubber in it, um, which also means that when you're printing with it, it smells like burning rubber, um, but it is a really, really cool material. I also really love the finish on this right here uh, and actual ground up tires, recycled tires in there. Um, so that's pretty awesome. Uh, a few other things, um, again, there aren't a lot of eco-friendly options when it comes to uh, these flexible materials, Oh, there we go. Um, so this one, DSM Materials Arnatel ID2045. The uh, Arnatel ID2045 is actually made of um, biodegradable materials, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, no, I'm sorry. It's... Um, ma filament is made of 50% bio-based feedstock. So I'm not sure what that means as far as what the part does after you're done with it. Um, but certainly it's nice that it's 50% bio-based feedstock. Um, so that's something. <laughs> uh, certainly better than a lot of petroleum-based materials that we've got here otherwise. A um, couple other notables on the eco-friendliness um, is this uh, 3D Filaments Kyoto Flex. As I understand it, it only comes in green. I think that's meant to prove the point that it's very eco-friendly, but I think this is the only color it comes in. I could be wrong. Um, but uh, this is a uh, PLA-based material, as is Matter Hacker's own soft PLA. Uh, so obviously anything made of PLA uh, has a certain amount of biodegradability to it. Uh, it's based on renewable resources, plants, corn often. Um, so, uh, so those are really, really nice as well. Flex fill by, uh, Form Futura as well. Um, this one is a biopolymer, I think. So I think there's some, uh, some, some bio-friendly aspect of the flex fill material. Um, but, uh, yeah. I don't think that's a big selling point for them. 
Um, another one to note here is Refill Active. It sounds, <laughs> sounds uh, unlike what it is, but um, the idea here is this is reflective. So reflective, reflective. Um, so this is a material with uh, reflective beads, little micro beads in it. And um, I'll show you some, some footage here, some pictures. But if you throw a flash on this, it, I mean, it lights up. It's, sometimes it's hard to take pictures of it because it's just a white light. Um, so it's really, really reflective. However, it is also extremely brittle. I don't know if you can tell from the, from the sample here, but it is, it just falls apart, it crumbles. Um, so yes, it's very flexible. Um, it's even squishy because of how soft it is, but if you squish it very much, it just crumbles apart. So, you know, maybe not the best. This Cheetah, Ninja Tech Cheetah, uh, this particular one is glow in the dark. So I'll have to show you some pictures of that too, but they actually make a glow in the dark. They call it neon, um, but a glow in the dark material. So that's pretty cool. This first one here, um, it's not the best print quality as you can tell. Um, but there's a reason for that, and this is the Flexion X60, made by um, uh, Made Shaper, Make Shaper, um, who was recently purchased by Keen Village Plastics. So the interesting thing about this stuff is it's called X60 because the shore hardness rating is 60A. If you know anything about shore hardness ratings, that is insane. Um, so this is so very flexible. <laughs> It is the most flexible filament in the world. Um, I think some of the SLA systems are getting to 60A or maybe have even exceeded it in some cases, but as far as a FDM material, a, a flexible filament, I mean, it, it literally, it doesn't get any softer than that. It feels like really soft silicone um, and uh, it's crazy. So the flexibility from 3D, um, these are neat. I think there was something wrong with the samples themselves <laughs> because they really didn't print particularly well or in some cases really at all. Um, but these are supposed to retain their flexibility in sub-zero temperatures, so that's pretty neat. This is Eel from Ninja Tech, and Eel is electrically conductive. So you can actually pass current through this tire. So that's pretty notable. Ah, this is Willow Flex, and Willow Flex uh, is fully compostable. So not only is it biodegradable, it is compostable. I think I even forgot to mention that at the top when I was doing the eco-friendly stuff. Yes, this is Willow Flex. It is um, it is flexible. It's kind of it's a pretty weak material to be honest. Uh, if you flex it very much, it starts to split and crack. Um, but if you want to have the least impact on your environment, not including the shipping from Germany, <laughs> um, this Willow Flex material is fully compostable. So you can, I've, I've done this. I've literally chopped up little pieces of it, thrown it in my compost heap in the backyard. So it, uh, it should return to soil in about a year. So that's pretty awesome. Um, other than that, um, there are some materials that are really kind of focusing on being as optically clear as possible. They don't show up very well in this particular sample, uh, this particular model, because of the way it was printed. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so that's uh, pretty neat. And the last thing I'll mention is Ninja Tech Armadillo. Um, this is really not a flexible material, really much at all. Um, but it is actually made of uh, TPU, TPE, um, that has been hardened. So if you notice that there are TPUs that have different levels of flexibility out there, but they also call themselves TPU, you can harden them to uh, whatever extent you might want. And so essentially Ninja Tech went as far as they could go with that and hardened the heck out of it uh, to make a really, really rigid and also extremely uh, impact resistant material in Armadillo. Okay. So that was a big, fast run through of all these different materials. Um, but what everybody wants to know, everybody has to know, what is the best? 
Which one was is the winner? Which one is the best one that I should use? What should I go out and buy right now? Well, um, as I mentioned earlier, it really depends on what you want to use these things for. But um, kind of breaking them down again by category helps limit the scope of what you might want. You know, if you really need something that is flexible and electrically conductive, here's your winner. It's Ninja Tech Eel. Um, you know, if you really want something that you can throw in the compost heap, it's Willow Flex. If you really want something that'll glow in the dark, it's Cheetah uh, or Ninja Tech or Ninja Flex or Armadillo. They actually do it in all three. Uh, if you really need something that is that will reflect light, you know, these are, you get the idea. Um, I had to pick some winners because I know that's what you want. And so it's, as uh, let's start from the front category and work our way to the more flexibles. Ninja Tech Armadillo, Tall Man 3D, T-Line, Form Futura, Crystal Flex, Tall Man 3D, PCTPE, Form Futura, Pegasus Ultralight, DSM Materials, Arnitel 2060HT, Lay Materials, Ben Lay 2, uh, Form Futura, Python Flex, Matter Hackers, Soft PLA, 3D Filaments, Kyoto Flex, Form Futura, Centaur, Polypropylene. Hey, that's all the bendables. Breathing hard here. In the bendable category, your winner is Arnitel ID 2060 HT. With a name that rolls right off the tongue, how could it not be a winner? Um, yes, so this material, um, and by the way, you can see I've actually got a, uh, uh, a brim on it, and this stuff is not easy to print with. I'll tell you that right up front. It's not easy to print with. Um, ended up having to heat the chamber uh, that I printed it in uh, to a very high degree. Uh, I think the, the printed, the bed itself was, was in excess of 100 degrees Celsius to get this stuff to print. But why do I like this stuff? Because it is extremely high temperature. That's what HT stands for. Um, so it is a rigid material with good impact resistance. Um, that is a high temperature material as well. So it's got a lot of, checks a lot of boxes. Uh, it's a really nice material. Um, it also prints really well. Um, so the, the, you can see the print quality is quite good um, once you can get it to print at all. <laughs> so there is that. Um, couple of honorable mentions. Um, I do want to point out Armadillo, as I mentioned earlier, super impact resistant not really bendable very much, but is a nice one. Um, and PCTPE from Tallman 3D, um, this stuff is able to give, but also, so it's basically, um, it's a polyamide copolymer TPE. So it's got the TPE in there for flexibility, but the uh, polyamide is your nylon. Um, so it's a nylon TPE mix basically. Um, so it's got, really good impact resistance, but it can conform if asked to. So that's a nice one. Um, also nice and clear. Uh, the other one is Pegasus Ultralight Polypropylene. Um, so I did do some polypropylene. I included polypropylene in these because they are lumped in with flexibles in a lot of cases. This particular formulation from Form Futura, I know you can't feel this, but it is crazy light. Um, it weighs next to nothing. Um, and, uh, so that is pretty neat. So yeah, so that's the bendable category. My winner, DSM materials, Arnitel ID 2060 HT. There's, there's the one I pick. The flexibles category. So this middle section here, color fab and gen flex form Futura flex fill 3d print life yoga flex bio inspiration willow flex. Generic TPU, this one from SaneSmart. 3D Print NY, Flexi 2. 3D Print NY, Flexi 96A. Matter Hackers, Pro Series Flex. Ninja Tech, Cheetah. Made Solid, Flex Solid. Recreus, Filiflex Medium. Ninja Tech, Eel. Fibrology, Fiberflex 40D. DSM Materials, Arnitel ID2045. Polymaker, Polyflex. Maker Geeks, Maker Flex TPEE. E3D Spoolworks, Reflex or Flex D. So that's all the flexibles. Uh, there were a lot of materials that fell into this particular category. Um, so it was hard to pick a winner here because, uh, you know, it's just all the different capabilities that a lot of these materials have. Um, anyway, 
I'm beating around the bush here a little bit. <clears throat> but my winner in this particular category was Fibrology's Fiberflex 40D. Um, <clears throat> I actually, this was one of the last materials that I printed with and I didn't print with it because I didn't know about it, to be honest with you. I didn't even pick it for the roundup. Um, this was a recommendation from uh, 3D Print NY um, it, because they had messed with it before. Um, it is, it, it's, it's gorgeous. <laughs> so this is the graphite. It's got some sort of metallic flake in it. Um, but the print quality is fantastic. It feels silky and, and smooth. Um, it's just the right amount of flexibility to it. I, I just don't have enough nice things to say about this stuff. Um, the only thing is because I have only really printed this and a couple other small things, uh, I don't know how tough it is compared to some of these other materials. Um, but I've actually got Fibrology's 30D uh, as a watch band and it's been holding up really, really well. So I got to think that the 40D is just as strong and, and uh, able to take just as much abuse as my watch band has. Um, so I really, really like that material. Again, the print quality, um, the graphite has that metal flake in there, which I really enjoy too. Um, and uh, just overall, it just seems like a really, really nice material. Uh, it's got some grip to it. So if you want to use it as tires, it would be a good option for that too. Um, so that is my, that is my pick, my, my Eco Struder recommendation <laughs> is the uh, Fibrology Fiberflex 40D. I really like that stuff. It is awesome. Um, you know, honorable mentions, there are numerous, certainly Ninja Tech Cheetah deserves an honorable mention. Um, I have and probably will continue to print with Cheetah more than I print with just about any other flexible material. Um, it's just super tough. It prints really well. Uh, it is amazing stuff. I really like it a lot. Um, Filiflex also their medium flex is a really, really good material. Um, I should say one of the, one of the things that I took into account was how many different colors you can get. Um, there's a ton of Fiberflex colors, uh, Filiflex colors, Cheetah colors, and some of the other TPUs and stuff. Um, they come in a lot of different colors. And so that's a big factor when it comes to picking the right flexible for your particular use case. Yoga Flex, I really like, really like a lot. I'm probably going to be using quite a bit of that in the future as well. So my favorite category, probably your favorite category as well, I'm guessing, is the squishy category. 3D filaments, pneumatique, bot feeder, refill active, 3D filaments, Flexmark 9, 3D filaments, Flexmark 8, Make Shaper, TPU 85A, 3D filaments, Flexability Plus, 3D filaments, Flexability, 3D filaments, Ultra Flex, Ninja Tech, Ninja Flex, Fibrology, Fiberflex 30D, Recreus, Filiflex Original, 85A, 3D filaments, Ultra Flex Plus, Make Shaper, Flexion X60. I am tempted to give the, give the nod to the most flexible material in the world, the most squishy. Um, but uh, honestly, it is so hard to print with. They claim that it can only be printed with the Flexion Flexible Materials Extruder. Um, I don't have one of those and I was able to print with it. Not terribly well, to be honest with you, but I was able to print with it and get a, a good sample. Um, so that's nice. But if I had to pick one of these, um, I gotta go back to Ninja Flex. I'm sorry, <laughs> I just love this stuff. Uh, Ninja Flex is super flexible, super squishy. It's nice stuff, um, and it's the it's it's my go-to. Um, it's also incredibly strong and very elastic. So, uh, really really good stuff. Available in tons of different colors. Uh, I like it a lot. Again, honorable mentions. Fibrology and their Fiberflex 30D, you know, nice squishy stuff. I also like the original Filiflex material, so this is really good. 3D has this Ultraflex material. They used to have Ultraflex and Ultraflex Plus. I can only find Ultraflex Plus now, so that's what this one is anyway. So uh, I like that one quite a bit too. So there you have it, your winners. 
Ninja Flex for the squishy category. Uh, Fibrology Fiberflex 40D for the flexible category. And DSM Materials Arnatel ID 2060HT for your bendable category. Those are my picks, those are my winners. What are your favorites? What do you like? Um, what else should I do? I've got, I, I spent a lot of money and a lot of time printing all of these things. And, uh, and I think there's a lot more content here. Certainly I've got tons of data. Uh, I will share in the link, a link to my, uh, or in the description, sorry, a link to the spreadsheet that I have been keeping and the one that I keep looking down at while I'm talking. Um, so that will be available for anybody to uh, jump in and check out. Um, so you can see all my observations, but I think I think a few of these require a little bit more detail. I want to dive into maybe each one of the categories a bit more. Um, I want to dive into um, highlight some of the materials that are a little bit unique, a little bit different. What do you guys want to see? What, what should I do? Um, and do you agree with my selections? Would you have picked something different? If if so, let me know down in the comments. Um, I also, by the way, I don't know that I have mentioned this before, but I have an email address. So if those of you who have more questions and don't necessarily want to put them in the YouTube comments, that's fine. I understand. Um, but you can shoot your messages to ecostruder at heartsmartproducts.com. So with that, uh, please, if you enjoyed this video, if you found it helpful, if you found it useful, please click the like button. Um, please do subscribe if you're not already subscribed. We passed 100 subscriptions a little while ago. That may be dating this video, but we'll see. Um, so I'm very excited about that. Um, so please spread the word, share with your friends, uh, like, subscribe, comment, ring the bell, do all the things. And uh, until next time, stay flexible, man. <laughs>